Good morning, everyone. Good to be together again at the start of another week. Uh, in a few days time, we will have been in lockdown for two weeks. And we're just thankful that we have God's word to to look at every day, to give us hope and to be able to share his promises. And we've been doing that from various Psalms. And at the end of last week, we started looking at Psalm 91. And we said that it was divided up into four distinct uh, sections, uh, the first of which focused on uh, our protection from evil in verse 1 to 4. Uh, secondly, our attitude toward evil in verses 5 to 10. Uh, thirdly, God's help against evil in verse 11 to 13. And then lastly, our security from evil in verse 14 to 16. Uh, uh, we saw that on, on day 7 that verses 1 to 2 deal with who God is and why we can trust him for deliverance. But we noted uh, repeatedly that these promises are really to those who, who truly dwell or abide in him. And then on day eight, we looked at what God does for us, given in verses three to four. We said that he will save us from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover us with his feathers and under his wings we will find refuge. And then thirdly, that his faithfulness will be our shield. And then we saw that our attitude toward evil needs to be one with firstly no fear, verse 5 to 6, and then walking by faith, verse 7 to 10. And so this morning we're going to look at the last two, thirdly God's help against evil. And so let's just read verse 11 through to 13 to set the stage for that. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. These verses assure us of angelic assistance when we face attacks from the supernatural realm. And it really makes sense. Satan and his demons are supernatural beings, and so are angels. We need supernatural help when we are dealing with supernatural enemies. If you want to read more about angels, read Psalm 103, verse 19 to 21, along with Hebrews 1, 14. And so let's just look at these couple of verses. The psalmist states three distinct things that angels do on our behalf. Number one, they are given charge over us. The term charge is from the Hebrew word meaning to appoint, to, to install, to command. Angels are actually assigned to us in particular situations. You think of Daniel in the lion's den. Think of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Uh, now I'm not suggesting that each one of us has a guardian angel as it were, which many Ancient writers like Oregon believed. But I do know and have experienced that there have been times when God has sent angels in my life to, to help me. And I wish I had more time to share some of those experiences. What is really important from these verses is that we have been appointed or assigned angelic assistance in mysterious and invisible ways. They come to our aid. Secondly, angels guard us in all our ways. The Hebrew word literally means to keep, to watch over, to observe, to preserve, to take care of. Angels are, are overseers of God's people. Like silent sentries, they stand guard over us. And then thirdly, he speaks of angels bear young in their hands. Now that's an interesting phrase. The verb actually means to, to lift or to carry. And yeah, in Psalm 91, it literally means to support, to sustain. And so if you look at this in overall picture, we, we have 
is that angels are appointed to us at given times, watching over us, preserving us, and guarding us from evil, and often supporting and sustaining us in those situations. And I would encourage you, even now, at the end of this devotion, to, to just go to 2 Kings 6, verse 15 to 17, where we have the, the classic story of Elijah and his servant. And then you will understand the role of angels in our lives. God's help against evil. And then lastly, security from evil. And we almost finished looking at this, this rather extensive devotion on Psalm 91. For 13 verses, the songwriter has been speaking. And now finally, God speaks. And so let's read from verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What just incredible words those are. And so here we, we have God speaking. And he gives us six I wills. And you really need to, to go through these slowly yourself and, and meditate on God's word. Because he loves me, the first, I will rescue him. Secondly, I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Number three. I will be with him in trouble. Number four. I will deliver him and honor him. Number five. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Wow, you, you cannot get more promises from God in one passage of scripture. These are addressed to you, my friend, this morning. Take hold of them. Believe them. Look at the initial phrase and then look at the closing phrase of verse 14. Because he has loved me, because he has known my name, the Lord says that those who love him and those who know him have the secure hope in him. And remember, as again I reiterate, these promises are for all those who truly dwell in the shelter of the Almighty. And so once again, I encourage you to hold on to God in this time, to truly dwell in the shelter of the Almighty. Are you a dweller? Are you truly seeking God's face? And if you are, then Hold on to these beautiful promises that are given to you in God's word. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you again for this incredible psalm. It is such a psalm of hope. It's a psalm that shows to us that you're a God who protects. You're a God who delivers. You're a God who, who shelters us from the storm. And Lord, may our dwelling be in you. May we truly abide in you. May we remain in the vine as you are the vine and we are the branches. And Lord, we pray that we may take these promises to heart this morning. That we will read over them again and again. And, and not just do that in a rational way, but truly believe them in our hearts. And so we just thank you, Lord, again that you are with us. And we pray that you'd continue to, to lead us uh, to those, those still waters where you are able to, to feed us and strengthen us. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you again. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow morning.